And we are at the Nashville Super Speedway for the next edition of this premiere for the Ally 400 on the NASCAR 21 Ignition Career Mode. Race number 17, which means that we are just 10 races away from the start of the playoffs. Drivers trying to get all the wins they can to accumulate those playoff points as well as the fight for the regular season championship continues with Kyle Larson coming into today with a two race lead in points over second place Denny Hamlin and our driver Keegan Schneider has dropped six spots in the standings in the last two races after back to back finishes outside the top 20 what will happen here at Nashville Super Speedway today it's the inaugural Cup Series race at the Nashville Super Speedway. Like, share, and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content as we are about to get into this race today. Welcome, everybody. We'll quickly go through today's starting lineup. And starting on the front row will be Eric Amarola and Chase Elliott. Coincidentally, Eric Amarola actually did qualify in the poll for the Ally 400 this year, so that's a little interesting. Anyway, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano will line up in row two with William Byron, Kyle Larson in row three, Kevin Harvick and Cole Custer in row four with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Brad Kisilowski rounding out the top ten. On top of that, we will be starting last because we do not have a fast race car. Got to try to keep my cool this time. Sonoma, we led a lot of laps, 32 to go. We got stuck in the sand. We had a flat tire. It took me like 10 laps to get out of the sand. I kid you not. Uh, we kept getting back stuck in it because I couldn't get the car to turn to the right. And we ended up DNFing and finishing last. So we'll hope for the best today. Got to try to keep my cool. And let's get into this one. It's going to be a pain just to try and get to the end of this race nonetheless. But again, I'll try. I always try. You had to give me an A for effort. Coming to the green flag. 300 laps, 400 miles. Green flag is in the air at Nashville. The AI are just so fast at this racetrack. I mean, there's really nothing you can do to try and keep up. Our strategy here, we can't afford to short pit. We just can't afford to short pit. We gotta stay on the track as long as we possibly can. And then hope for cautions to get some laps back. We're already in the ball hard. Turns one and two. The car is super tight. With the stability on, without stability, it's not drivable. And whether you have stability on or off at Nashville, the field is so much faster. We were three tenths of a second slower in qualifying compared to 39th when we qualified last. I will say the car seems to handle a little bit better in turns three and four than what it does in one and two. Maybe we'll have some DNFs or some wrecks. Who knows? Really hoping we get some accidents in this race. Just try to stay out of trouble. Mold for two and trying to complete races at Nashville on the custom schedule season. So we'll see what this will bring today. Just kind of running my own line. I, I, I don't even care about how consistent I run the bottom. Whether it drives in tight and I can't enter, you know, exactly where I want to. I will say again, three and four, it's handling a lot better. I have as loose of a setup as I possibly can. But with the stability help, it's still super, super tight. Again, there's really just nothing I can do. Had a bad feeling. I was probably going to run towards the back. And I would stink that back-to-back -back last place finishes. Especially considering we should have won Sonoma. Should have won Sonoma. We got the Pocono doubleheader coming up next. I have no clue how that's going to go. We're either going to do really good or we're not. The 550 tracks are hit or miss in this game. Majority of the time you're slow. And these harder difficulties.
Going down to the apron into the trioval. It's going to use a little bit more tires up. I don't see this being a very long highlight video. Sonoma wasn't long because we didn't make it to the end. It was about 25 minutes. I, I don't see this one being much longer than that. At the most. This is just painful to run this slow. I mean, it, this is just insane. And we have the Ally car for the Ally 400 still off the pace. This is the home race for our sponsor. <laughs> what a great showing. At least it's easy for the fans in attendance to single us out. Like I said, we're just hoping for some major crashes in this one that we get some DNFs. And maybe we can, you know, cycle ahead. I, obviously, we're so slow, we're probably going to lose a lap or two in the middle of a single green flag uh, transition. I don't know how far we could go on fuel because I did DNF in each of those first two races. I think I pitted at about lap 50, if I remember right. The leaders are faster than what they are in real life here by about two seconds. It's just insane. You have to probably put this down to rookie to even compete. I'm not doing that. Well, we actually lasted a lap longer than what I thought we would. Chase Elliott leading the top side down the back straight away. Satter's just going to try to stay low and hopefully everybody gets around him on the outside. to let his teammate Chase Elliott go to the lead. Elliot Logano get through with Elliot on in front here at Nashville. Look at that car just not turn. It's just insane. We're going to blow a tire before we get to the end of the run. I can see it already. Man, Brad Kisilowski clipping the apron going into turns three and four. One left. And Christopher Bell got squeezed three wide with his teammate Hamlin up the middle. That's insane. We got a lift in the tri-oval just to keep it off the wall. And then we're in the wall again in one and two anyway. I can't I can't get the car to turn. I just... 115 miles an hour isn't enough, I guess. This is like NASCAR Thunder 2004 career mode. Your first couple races. This is what it feels like. One left. Clear all Only we're in Hendrick Motorsports equipment doing this. Clear all 112 miles an hour. Still pushing up the track. Now I can get back in the gas. even know if it's worth running to the end of this i don't want to simulate it because i know it's going to give me a better finish so i don't want to do that for that reason but if i just dnf get this race over with yeah I'm gonna lose another lap 10 laps after we lost the first one Stay out of everybody's way, I guess. All clear. William Byron to the inside of Kyle Busch for the race lead. Yeah, I'm not going to mail it in right now. I'll wait till the first set of pit stops. It's the only way I'm going to even compete this whole race and not just start and park. Imagine Hendrick Motorsports starting and parking. This is a waste of time. I know the Pocono races are short, so I might actually be able to record one of those today if I just DNF here, because this is just going to waste my Monday afternoon. One 
I will say, I'm glad I haven't gotten... I got ran into once, but they were also three wide up the exit of the corner under me, so it's... With me going so far off the pace, it's reasonable that that happen. I'm not even on the gas, and the car's just going up the track. Because it can't hold the corner on old tires. We'll try alternating through the different camera angles for the first time today. I know I've hit the wall quite a few times in the first 30 laps. I'm surprised I actually haven't hit it more. Still, still hit the wall. How much the cars behind me are slowing down just to pass me because I'm slowing down so much? Like BJ McLeod, just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, the whole field, the entire field has now lapped us twice in 32 laps. We're two laps behind the next closest driver already. I don't even think I was this slow in the custom schedule seats. Look at this! 93 miles an hour! It is still pushing tight. It's like, the physics, the physics of this track don't even make any sense. It really doesn't. You cannot run this on a hard difficulty. And expect to not not only have a chance to win, but to even run close to the top thirty. It's just not possible. First pit stop of the day. It'll be four tires and fuel for the forty-eight of Schneider who decides to pit at lap forty-two. Short pity because I couldn't keep it above 90 miles an hour. I was actually downshifting from fourth gear to third gear just to get the car to roll faster through the corner because I was able to grab a gear and go, which is insane at a track that's a mile and a third in length, but whatever. So now he is, uh, he was already three down when he pitted, so probably going to be about five down when he comes out of the pits. Be interesting to see exactly how fast I am compared to the rest of the field while I'm on pressure tires. Use this access road. Out of the pits here. About to spin out. Gotta be careful getting back on the gas. Oh wow, there's water on the back stretch now. That's nice. <laughs> what? off. Christopher Bell, Chris Busher. It's time to get a ticket three wide for try oval. Just waiting for the rest of the field to pit here before I decide to just mail it in and DNF just to wait and see how many drivers might get knocked out of the race first. I don't quit that easy. Chase Elliott's back to 10th place now. Having a poor run. That's why it's so tight with the stability. You can see the card want to turn to the right. Why is it turning to the right like that? Like, I'm pulling to the left the entire time. And as I'm getting back in the gas, look at it, it's just like, right, 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 right. And that's probably why the car gets so tight on the long run. Well, there it is. Caution 
is out for the first time today. Schneider will stay out. We'll head to the restart. We run a couple laps after the restart. The green flag is back in the air. Once we get a couple laps into the... Oh, we got cars going wide up here. Oh, we got cars checking up. Shutter just about got ran into from behind. Might see some cars pitting this time off turn four. Gonna have to keep an eye on it. Oh, yeah, we definitely got some cars pitting off the exit of turn four. About four of them are going to pit. And will those be spots that will be up for grabs? Crash out. This is not worth running the full 300 laps. Because we would need five drivers to DNF before we even get another point scored. And Reddick just turned himself. What was that? Caution's out for the second time today. Reddick turned himself right in front of us. My mic fell out. Maybe over 190. There's no way you could go that fast on this short of a track. It's not even a mile and a half. The corners are so tight, too. Like, our speeds on the short run, I would think, are pretty accurate to how they are in real life. Just over 80 laps in. It's more laps than I've ever completed at Nashville in this game. But, I think it's time to disqualify ourselves. And you guys might be wondering, well, how are you going to disqualify yourself to get this race over with and finish last? Well... You're about to find out here very soon. I don't want to. I don't want to take out the front runners. Got Kyle Busch leading the race right now. I think Bush has one on the crew mode. I can't quite remember if he has or not. I'm pretty sure he has. Probably be his second win of the season. Well, we're going to try this. I just don't want to take out the drivers at the front of the pack. Done this to begin. There we go. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Chris Busher is leading right now. I know the race is still actually running. So I'm just going to end the race weekend. And we'll check the finishing results after this. That was... Are you kidding me? Gotta be kidding me. What the heck was that? <laughs> Flipping on the pace lap. Let's try to simulate this again. All right, well, let's take a look at the finishing results. Kyle Busch still went on to win. He was leading when all the cautions uh, started to fall when I was trying to DNF originally. So good for Kyle Busch getting a win. Kyle Larson, what a streak. He has now finished in the top two in three straight races. Obviously, he had back-to-back -back wins coming in. Second place finish here. He'll expand that points lead even further. Ryan Blaney finishes third. He won some laps earlier. Eric Almirola fourth. He started on the pole. William Byron. 
finishes fifth. Chase Elliott led some laps, finished sixth. Joey Legato seventh. Eric Jones eighth. Biggest Stenhouse nice junior ninth. And Matt DeVendetto rounds out the top ten. Denny Hamlin finished back in the 12th position. He went in second in the point standings. Now, let's take a look at those point standings. So Kyle Busch does win his first race of the season, which means that is the ninth different winner on the year. Just seven spots remain open for the playoffs with nine races to go until the playoffs. Larson, again, three wins. By far is the regular season points leader. And we fall from 11th to 13th. So we have now lost a total of eight positions in the points in the last three races. With a 31st in the Coca-Cola 600, last at Sonoma and last at Nashville. I mean, we're not going to fall outside of the top 30 in points. Could you imagine if we did, though? How many points ahead of 30th are we? Just to, just to clarify here. 31st is Austin Sindrick with 151. And we have over 300, don't we? I thought I saw that. Yeah, we're 214 points ahead of him. And, and with nine races to go... Max amount of points he could score is 40 in a race. Cindric's not getting that great of finishes either. So even if we, you know, keep finishing last like that, and he finishes like 20th every race, then he can maybe catch us. But I don't even think he'll do that. And that's if we DNF every... I don't plan on DNFing the rest of the season. But we got six DNFs now on the year. Like, share, and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content. We'll see if we can bounce back in the Pocono doubleheader. I'll catch you guys next time.